Hello everyone, Surfing Pikachu here. This time I'm bringing you a uh, Hearthstone Knights of the Frozen Throne uh, card review. So, I've been playing Hearthstone since, like, before Nax came out, so I have a lot of experience with the game. I just want to get this out before the expansions hit, and this is mostly just to see how, like, r right or wrong I'm gonna be about the new cards. So let's start off with the first card, Crypt Lord, Druid, 3 mana, 1, 6 taunts. After you summon a minion, gain plus one health. So, 1 6 taunt for 3 is pretty good stat wise, but the biggest problem is that the buff isn't really that helpful. Because when you want, when you have like a high health taunt, you don't want to keep buffing the health. Especially since this doesn't, this trades, this trades like down with most things. Since most things have more than one attack and it doesn't more than one health and it doesn't really help with aggro so I don't think it'll see play next is Nash three minus druid spell give your hero plus three attack and plus three armor so it's kind of like bite or like claw except in the case case of claw claw is one mana for plus two plus two this is three man this is two more for just plus one attack and plus one armor so and bite bite is minus is pl plus one plus one for one more mana cost and that doesn't see play at all and claw doesn't see play either so I, I don't think this is gonna be very good might be okay in arena but probably not good in constructed. Next is web weave five mana druid spell summon two one two poisonous spiders. So I think it's interesting, like um the. Cr the creators said that it was too, too like good at four mana. So at five mana, it's probably fair. But that's the it's like the that's the biggest problem. It's too fair. Uh, it's not overpowered enough to see play probably. But I mean, the biggest problem with Druid is that they have no way of removing big threats. So I mean, Poisonous does help with that. It's just really scary against like priest because they can just potion of madness one of them and kill both of them. So I don't know. I don't think it'll see play. Maybe an arena. Next is Druid of the Swarm. Two mana, one two. Choose one. Transform into a one two with poisonous or a one five with taunt. So this is much. This is really good. It's like the taunt because it'll really help with early game. Since it's a 1-5, which really, it's really hard to trade up for aggro decks for a 5 health on turn 2. Or, or for like, late game versus a control deck, I mean a 1-2 poisonous thing isn't that bad. Because it'll, d like, just destroy all their big threats. So I think it might be, maybe C play. I think it, people will probably overlook it before the expansion, because it's kind of, it doesn't look that cool. But I think it might C play. Next is Spreading Plague, 5 mana, summon a 1-5 Scarab with Taunt, if your opponent has more minions than you, cast this again. So it's kind of like Unleash the Hounds on an empty board, but at that, like, this is okay if you're like trying to fight back for a board, especially with the, there's a new thing, like there's a new bolster effect for Druid, so like this is a one. This summons a 1-5 taunt, so 1-5 taunts are worth about 2 or 3 man, 2.5 man, I'll say. So at 2, you're get, you're breaking even on the value, and on 3, you're de- You're good, like 3 is- 3 is really good. Uh, I think it's unreasonable to get more than 3 of these, but this is pretty okay. It might see play in like a, I don't know, a ramp druid, uh, drain druid, I don't know. Next is the bolster effect I was talking about. Four mana, two, three, strong shell the scavenger. Battle cry, give your top minions plus two plus two. So it's bolster with a two three body and two more mana. So I mean if there's only one top minion up, it's basically a Yeti. But but it once you get more top minions up, it's really strong. Especially since there's especially since there's a couple cards in this expansion that there's like this one card that's a 4 mana 2 3 that taunt which summons another 4 mana 2 3 taunt. So I think it might, it might, that's a good combo, but I don't know if it'll see play. It might. 
it's pretty good. It's pretty okay, actually. Next is five spa fate spinner, five mana, five three. Choose a death rattle, but it's secret to your opponent. It's either deal three damage to all minions or give them plus two plus two. So this is actually an interesting card design since it's, it's kind of like a secret. Like it's sh you choose a se death rattle secretly, so your opponent doesn't know what you choose. The biggest problem with it is like. These effects are too drastic either way, so because they can probably guess based off the board. Like if you're behind on board, they'll probably guess that you did pl deal three damage to all minions. And the biggest problem is it's five three for five. Like that's a really bad. It's like wait, three mana means the three health means it can tr it trades down with the two drop potentially. So that's a really big tempo loss. So I don't think it'll be good. But it's interesting card design. I hope to see more of this like type of card in the future. Next is Ultimate Infestation. 10 mana. Deal 5 damage. Draw 5 cards. Gain 5 armor. And summon a 5-5 five, five ghoul. Like, this is the ultimate value card. Since you draw 5 cards and then you do a Firelands portal basically. And you gain 5 armor. So you can sort of think of it like a fi Firelands portal. With one arm, with five armor and then five cards. The biggest problem with this card is like drawing five cards is a lot, and it, like I think it like it will probably make you get really close to fatigue because five cards is like five cards is one sixth of your deck, and the biggest like you have to have a small hand to make use of the five card, the drawing five cards, and you can, so you can't use it like after. You can't, and since it's 10 mana, you can't use the drawn cards after you play this. So, I think it might be a one-off in Ramp Druid, but it's definitely not a two-off, because it's 10 mana. It's, But it's really strong for its effect. So, I don't know, it might, it's, I think it'll be a one-off in, like, Ramp Druid. Next is Hy Hadronox. 9 mana, 3, 7, death rattle, summon your top minions that died this game. So, like, it's a 9 mana, 3, 7, that's not good already. And the death rattle's really good, cause it, but the biggest problem is it's a death rattle, and it has 7 health. So your, po I don't think, your opponent doesn't want to trade into this, especially since the 3 attack isn't very threatening. So you might just keep this alive, and you won't get value out of its death rattle. So... I don't, like, people were saying, like, ten on turn 10, you might do, like, this plus naturalize, just to summon all your top minions. I don't think that's, that's not a good combo. No. I don't think it'll see play. But the interesting thing is you can, like, combo this with the Zoth, too, I guess. But it still won't see play, probably. Next is Malfur, the new hero cards, Malfury and the, Pe the Pestilent. So it's a 7 mana, choose 1, summon 2 poisonous spiders or 2 scarabs with taunt. And it's it's uh, it has a hero power, it changes your hero power too. So hero power is either plus 3 attack or gain 3 armor. So it's basically either an armor up or like just 3 damage. So it's not very flashy compared to the other hero cards. Like, the other hero cards, like, do this, these insane things and have insane hero powers. So this is just kind of bland, but I think it might be more powerful than the other ones. Because people will under, people are going to underrate the summon two poisonous spiders and, or two scarabs. But, uh, poisonous spiders are one twos, and scarabs are one fives. So, I mean, it's especially good with Fandrill. That's because you'll summon like two, four bodies on turn, on turn seven. Also, the the plus five armor when you get it when you play it is really strong against like combo decks because it'll get it can get you out of like burn range for a lot of things. So I don't know this like the, for a lot of these cards they're just really interesting designs. So I don't know if they'll see play, especially the new hero cards. Because there's all of them have really strong effects. The biggest problem, which is the cost. So next is Bear Shark. Uh, Bear Shark is three mana, four three. Can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. It's also a beast. So, I mean, it might see play in mid range hunter. 
like, when it first came out, I was thinking, like, it's pretty insane, but now that I'm, like, seeing the other cards, it's not, I don't think it's gonna be that good. But it does, uh, 4-3 is a good stat line for 3, but the biggest problem is it's just, it trades with, a, like, a Fiery War Axe. But it's good against Mage, and, and it's 4, four attack, which wouldn't be good against Priest, except, I don't know. Uh, it might. I think it just might see play in mid range, but the biggest problem is it has to compete with other three cost cards like Eagle Horn Bow, um, Kill Command, Unleash the Hounds, Rat Pack. Those those are all good cards. This might not see play because it doesn't fit. Next is Play Dead. One mana trigger a friendly minion's death rattle. So this is the si this is basically the effect of the, was it, the Stalker from Angoro, the 3 mana 3 3 that does it, and then Princess Huhuran, which the 6 5 mana 6 5 that does it. Uh, it's interesting. The, bi the biggest problem with it is like, Death Rattles, death rattles have to be really good t for you to, the Death Rattle has to like have an immediate impact for you to like use this on it. And you have. You have to like combo it, so you have to like play the death row minion, then use it. So I don't know. I don't think it'll be that good. Cause like most of the time adding a body to like a spell helps the effect much more than taking the spot taking the body away and like reducing the cost. So I don't know. I don't think it'll see play though. Next is Stitch Tracker. Three mana two two B battle cry discover a copy of, mi of a minion in your deck. So this is really like, this is really good value, but the biggest problem is it's in Hunter, which doesn't really facilitate the control style gameplay. So, yeah, I don't think it'll... Uh, if it was in a different class, it might see play, but the biggest problem with it is just the class it's in, because you lose a lot of tempo with a 3-mana 2-2. So it doesn't, really, it doesn't fit into aggro, which is actually a good thing, because it would be really boring if they gave it a good... Hunter a good aggro tool. But... The big, but Control Hunter really just doesn't exist at all. Okay, so next card. 5 mana 4 6 Corpse Widow. Your Death Rattle cards cost 2 less. So this card is really good actually. Since you can play this and play like... You can play this and then you can play like 2 Kindly Grandmothers and it's basically a, a 1 mana 4 6 and then 2 Kindly Grandmothers. So it might be really strong. Like, 4-6 isn't bad for its cost either, so it could stick on board for, like, one turn. Especially, like, most things can't get rid of 6 health. The only one that can really consistently get rid of 6 health is, like, Mage. But they have to waste the Fireball on it. So, I don't know, I think it might see play, actually. Next is Exploding Bloat Bat. 4 mana 2-1 Beast. Death Rattle deal 2 damage to all one enemy minions. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think this is good at all. Like, it, the thing I can, all I can think of is like the co a combo with like play dead. So it becomes like a starfall with a two one body that also can deal two damage to enemy minions. But the biggest problem, I don't know. The tempo loss is really huge. Four mana for two one, really bad stats, and it's deal dealing two uh, two damage to all enemy minions at like. It's really, it's a delayed effect because it's a death rattle, and your opponent mostly gets to decide when it happens. So it's not very impactful either for the death rattle effect. So you have to like combo it with play dead or like the stock stone skit, I don't know what it's called, the Angoro, uh, like play dead thing, and then Princess Suhuran. But that's the biggest, that's really bad. So I don't think you'll see play. Especially, like, it looks more like you have to play it in a control hunter, so... Control Hunter is never going to be good, I don't think. Because they have to make really overpowered cards to make Control Hunter really good. Next is Venom Strike Trap. 2 mana secret when one of your minions is attacked. So I'm at 2-3 Poisonous Cobra. So this is a... I don't know. This is... I'm going to say it, I don't know a lot. So this is a really good... This is like a 2-3 for... 2-3 Poisonous. That's actually pretty good. Uh, but it's after a minion is attacked, but at the same time, a two th 
the biggest problem with Hunter is like, it this kind of fits in a Control Hunter because it's a removal. It's like hard removal because of the poisonous. The biggest problem with like that is Control Hunter is never going to be good. Like, unless they print really overpowered cards for Hunter. But the biggest problem with Control Hunter is that they have to print... Cards that they print have to not work with aggro for... Like, aggro to not overshadow Control Hunter. But this is... This is an interesting card, at least. Like... It's... I feel... It's better than the other ones. Um, uh, let's see. There's, like, Cat Trick, 4-2... 4-2 Stealth. That one's really good, though. Uh, there's... Bear Trap, which is in Wild right now. It's a, after your hero's attacked, it's a 3-3 with Taunt. That's okay. There's Snake Trap, which is ba which is after a minion's attacked, it summons 3-1-1s. Three 3-1-1 snakes. And those, that's not very good, because it's like really easy to clear 1-1s. This is, might be actually good, because it's like a 3 health. So it's kind of harder to clear than like the other ones. Next up. Uh, Abominable Bowman, 7 mana, 6, 7, Death Rail, summon a friendly beast that died this game. I don't, this is not going to be very good. I'm just going to say it right now. Seven, first off, it's a 7 mana, and then 6, 7 is a, really, is a big tempo loss. 6, 7 is a Boulder Fist Ogre, so it's a pretty big tempo loss. And Death Rattle, summon a friend, random friendly beast. So you don't, that means you don't want to play any of the good early game beasts like Alley Cat or like Jeweled Macaw or Explo the Fiery Bat. You don't want to play any of those. You just you have to play like the bigger ones, like Tundra Rhino or um, uh, High Main. All uh, High the biggest problem with the highest value one is High Main. Uh, it also summons two two beasts. So if you summon those, that's not very good value either. So this isn't. I don't think this is a good C play, especially since it's, since it's so expensive. Next is Toxic Arrow. Two mana spell, deal two damage to a minion. If it survives, gives it points in this. So, I don't think it's going to be very good. It's very flexible, but the biggest problem is dealing... It doesn't really work. The poisonous effect isn't really going to help you. Like, you want to play it on a small minion, but small minions typically don't have, like, three or more health. And you don't want to... And when you use it on an opponent, you want to use it on something that will die immediately or or won't get much out of the poisonous effect. So, two, but 2 mana deal 2 damage isn't very good, so I don't think it'll see play. Next is Professor Putricide. 4 mana, 5, 4. After you play a secret, put a random se hunter secret into the battlefield. So, I feel like this is a strong card. Like, you can... The bi but the biggest problem is Hunter Secrets right now aren't very good. Like, there's Explosive Trap, Freezing Trap, Snake Trap, Venom Strike that's going to come out, Misdirection, Snipe. I mean, it's not very, those aren't very good. Like, Explosive Trap's the best one, and Freezing Trap's kind of lost value with all the, like, really hyper-aggressive decks, like Pirate Hunt, Pirate Warrior. The But it does combo well with, like, it combos well with like a Cloak Tantris, so you can play on turn seven. You can play both of those, and then just spam a bunch of secrets, and just get a bunch of secrets. The biggest problem is Hunter secrets aren't very high impact. That's just the biggest problem with this card. But it has good stats for its cost. It might see play. I don't know. The big, they just the meta game has to facilitate be like Hunter secrets being good. So I don't think you'll see play in this meta game. Next is Deathstalker Rexar. This is the Hunter Hero card. So it's a 6 mana f battle cry deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. And its hero power is Build a Beast, which is craft as custom zombie beast. So zombies are. You choose a card with text that's cost less than 5 mana. So, like, uh, there's like Bitter Tide Hydra. Um. Vicious fledgling, those kind of things. Then you choose. Then you choose like a, a vanilla minion or a, a minion with like a keyword. So like, there's like, um, shark. No shark bear. Bear shark is a minion with text. So it just needs to be cards with keywords. So stone tusk boar, um, the wind fury, the young dragon hawk. So those kind of things. So. 
Um, six, at six mana, dealing two damage to all enemy minions isn't that good. Because, like, at that point of the game, aggressive decks usually have higher, like, health minions. So you, that means you have to, do, like, trade a little bit into the board to make this, make the effect better. And, but the build beast is actually really strong. Like, getting a resource every turn is really strong as, like, Warlock is shown. It's basically a life tap that doesn't deal damage to you. But, like, and the combos can be potentially insane, because you can give charge, like, Stone Tusk War plus a lot of things is, like, really good. And it's, uh, there's also, just, there's also, let's see, I mean, Bear Shark's okay. It, it gives anything plus, it gives anything, um, can't be targeted, which is okay. Like, you can make a huge beat stick, a huge, like, minion that deals, like, tons of damage. That can't be removed easily. Um, but I don't think you'll see play. Because it's like. I mean you might put it in a mid range deck. Like when you're in top deck mode. And you need a little bit of gas. Because the hero power gives you gas every single turn. But but then you're losing the pl the 2 damage to face every turn. So I don't know if the trade off will be worth it. Uh, the, the biggest thing is. It looks like you have to play it in a control deck. And control decks for Hunter aren't very good. So, next up is Breath of Sintragrosa. One mana, deal two damage to a random enemy minion and freeze it. So, I think it's a lot better than most people think. Because the freezing effect is actually okay. Since if you're late game and you play this and it hits a big minion, that at least means a big minion can't hit your face for like, I don't know, like a ton of damage, but, and at early game, it's, like, your opponent's probably not gonna have a big board, big, the biggest problem is, is random, so it might not hit the minion you want, and it's like, two damage for one is like, better, it's better to have targeted two damage for one, so, I don't know, it might see play, probably not, I'm, I'm gonna say, Probably very niche, probably not gonna see play. Next is Cold Wraith, three mana, three four battle cry. If an enemy is frozen, draw a card. I feel like this is actually strong. This is because three mana, three four is really good stats for that mana cost, and battle, and it's possibly a draw. So, like, I think it might. It's gonna be very unfair in arena, cause like, it's really easy to freeze things for mage, like, this is okay, this is pretty good, the battle, cr like, I think the biggest thing is its st stats are good, good, and it has a potential upside, so that means it might see play, in, might see play constructed. Next card, Frozen Clones, 3 mana secret, after your opponent plays a minion, add 2 copies of it to, of it to your hand. So, this is actually interesting. So like most most of the most of the minion based like mage secrets like uh, mirror entity or potion of polymorphs you do, your opponent knows how to play around them they play their smallest minion and then they then they play their biggest minion since it doesn't matter if the small minion gets turned into a one one or if it gets copied but this is actually interesting because your opponent might not want to play a cheap minion and give you like cheap a good cheap minion to. Get, Two copies of a good cheap minion, but they also, and they might actually want to play like a big minion, so they clunk up your hand, so you can't play both of them all, both of them. So it's like, so you can only play one per turn. But at the same time, they don't want to give you a two a high cost, a, like a high value, like high va value high cost minion. So it's actually interesting design, but I don't think you'll see play. That's Cause secret, mage secrets aren't very good. Like the best ones, ice block and mirror entity and counter spell and stuff like those. So next card is doomed apprentice. Three mana, three two. Your opponent's spells cost one more. I think this is actually stronger than a lot of people think. Cause disrupting your opponent's spell casting is really strong. As long as you disrupt one, you're get you've basically gained a little bit of tempo. But and. And you, if you play play this like 
against a mage before turn seven, you play this, then they can't flame strike your board. And that's actually it's interesting. Like if you can make you can protect your board with this, you can like stop their combos. It's pretty good. I think it's gonna be more more like powerful than most people will think. But I think I don't think it'll be very a staple in most mage decks. Next card is Ghastly Conjurer, 4 mana 2 6 out of Mirror Image to your hand. So, this really helps with Quest Mage first off, because you're adding a spell that's not in your deck to your hand. And it's a cheap spell that you can always just play because it's 1 mana. But, and 4 mana for a 2 6 isn't a terrible stat line. And, and if you play this on turn 5 and just play the spell you get immediately, it's like a 4 mana 2 6 summon 2 zero twos with Taunt. Which is about 210 worth of stats. Which is pretty good. I don't know. I think it'll be better than most people think. So, next card is Ice Walker. 2 mana, 1, 3. Your hero power also freezes. So, it's all it's an ele elemental too. So, you might put it in an elemental mage deck. But... Let's see, 1 3 for 2 mana isn't very good stat line. But it's like an ice. The hero. Uh. Hmm. Like freezing things with your hero power might be okay. But most of the time when you ping things, you want to kill things with just a small ping. But I don't know. Like, you could hear. Like, you can ping a um, pirate warrior's face so they can't attack every turn so that. They just kind of get burned out. I mean, I'm really conflicted on this card since freeze is actually a decent effect, but the biggest problem is only it's a single target freeze for your hero power, which single target freezes haven't been very good unless they're like frostbolt. And frostbolt's mostly used to kill minions and not to complete, not to just use one frostbolt and freeze them. So I don't think it'll see play. It might though, like it might surprise most people. But there's a little bit of potential, but I don't think you'll see play. Next is Glacial Mysteries, 8 mana. Put one of each secret from your deck into the battlefield. And the max limit on secrets is 5. So, oops, I opened. Oh, I need to go back. So, I don't know. Um, this is kind of like... It's kind of like Mysterious Challenger for a Paladin, but it doesn't have a body, and it's 8 mana. So, the biggest problem with this is it's 8 mana. It's very expensive, and Mage Secrets are pretty low impact on the board. So, I don't, know, I don't think it'll see play. Especially s since you can only put one of each secret in your, in your battlefield, into the battlefield, so you have to play at least 3 secrets. Three different secrets to make this worth it. And it's really expensive. So I don't think you'll see play. Next is th Simulacrum. Three mana. Copy the lowest cost minion in your hand. So I think you'll see play in the Quest Mage decks that run Sorcerer's Apprentice. Or like, I don't know, Arcane Giants is also good with this. So you can like get... It's like Redundancy. Redundancy is always good in like a card game. Like a spec... If you're like doing a combo deck, so copying the lowest, like I see the combo potential, and if you get like multiple sources of apprentices out, like at least one, and then you play this, you get another one, then you play, then you play uh, one source of the apprentice, then you play the another copy of this, then you have four of them. That's okay, but I don't know. It probably. I don't think it'll, it might see play in combo decks for redundancy. But the mage combo decks right now aren't very, like, it's most, freeze mage doesn't need sources of print, doesn't need minions. And quest mage isn't that good right now, but it might become good in this expansion. So, it might see play. Next is Syndragrosa. Uh, 8 mana, 8, 8. Bat Dragon, the battle cry summons zero, two zero two frozen champions, and frozen champions are one mana zero twos zero ones with a death rattle and a random legendary minion to your hand. I really like its flavor because the one health means that you're using a fire blast to melt them out. It's like very flavorful, but 
it wasn't when I first saw it, it wasn't very impressive, but the, I saw, later they reveal they get the mage hero card actually synergizes pretty good with this, but I don't think it I don't think it has enough value to see play outside of like mage hero decks since eight mana for eight days is like not very good, and then the what you can't use these as you can't use the frozen champions as like a body. Like, you can't attack with them, so they're not very useful. They're only good for, like, getting legendary minions for two mid, I guess. So, this is the hero, Lit Frostlish Jaina, the mage hero card. Nine mana, battle cry, summon a 3-6 water elemental, and your elementals have lifesteal this game. And the, bow, the pow, hero power is deal one damage. If it kills a minion, summons a, wa a water elemental. So... This is what I was talking about when I said it's synerg synerg the Syndragosa synergizes with this. Like, you you play this on turn 9, then turn 10 you play Syndragosa, and then ping one of your things, and you get you get another water elemental for a legendary minion for 2 mana. Like, this is actually pretty interesting, since you summon a 4 mana card with a 3-6 water elemental, and it has lifesteal. I think lifesteal is... I, oh yeah, <laughs> I haven't shown any lifesteal cards up to this point, so lifesteal is whenever this main deals damage, or whenever this thing does, deals damage, heal that much damage, heal that much to your hero. So, this is actually interesting, since it'll definitely fit in like elemental mage decks. Yeah, and the biggest thing is if you play this when you already have, already have a board of elementals, and you're like low on health, you can heal it all back by trading those elementals into something, or just going face. And you also get a water elemental out of the deal. And then your future elementals also have lifesteal, so if you play like... Let's see, if you play like the blaze color, it really... You play blaze color, then it's a 7 mana, deals 5 damage, summon, deal 5 damage, heal 5 damage to your face, and, and summon to 6-6. Six, six. So this has the potential to be really insane, but like this is a different control type of deck than other mage decks. Like this is more value oriented than other control mage decks, which try to burn you out, like try to last long enough to burn you out. Like this is very different, so it's really hard to judge a, this kind of control mage. Next card, Chillblade Champion, four mana, three two, charge, life steal. So, I feel like this is really fair. Like, no, not fair. This is, like, a little more than fair. So, it's 3-2 charge, which is, like, for... It's, like, a wolf rider for one more mana. It's one more mana for one more health. So, that the part isn't very good. But, lifesteal... I feel like lifesteal is going to be very good. Since lifesteal... You hit this, then you heal three. And if they have to trade a minion in, you heal three back, so it's a holy light, and you get a 3 2 charge, which is pretty good. So I think it might see play. The biggest problem is it has to compete with other 4 mana paladin cards, and there's a lot of good 4 mana paladin cards. So it might see play. Next is 2 mana Dark Conviction, set up minions' attack and health to 3. So. I initially thought it wasn't that good, but then I thought about it a little bit more. Like when you're top decking, I didn't think it would be that good, but then but then I remembered your hero power also gives you a like a body to cast this on, so it's a four mana three three, which isn't very good, but if you're in top deck mode any like minion counts. Like it's basically the same effect as uh Keeper of Uldaman or like Sun Keeper Terum setting all all your minions to three threes, all the minions to three threes. And 3-3 three, three minions aren't, are pretty good. The, good. the biggest problem is it's 2 mana for the effect. And like, it doesn't give you a body. Like, it doesn't give you an additional body like Keeper of Uldaman or Sun Keeper Terum does. So, uh, I don't think you'll see play. Next is... Righteous Protector. 1 mana, 1-1 one, one with Taunt and Divine Shield. This is an Anoyatron with 1 less health. For one less mana, but that's really good. This is like a broken one drop. Since Argent Square sees some play in like 
already see some play in Paladin, this is just strictly better. And you can, or you can basically run two Argent Squires and two of these, and then you basically have four Argent Squires. I th this is really going to break Paladin's Arena, because they already have good late game, they already have good value. And then they're just going to get a broken one drop on top of that, like that's really good. I think it'll be, I think it's broken enough to see Constructed in play too. Constructed play, yeah. Because it's like an Anoitron saw play in aggressive decks and like grind mid-range gems, mid-range decks and control decks. So this might fit into all types of Paladin. Next card, Arrogant Crusader. 4 mana, 5-2. Death Rattle, if it's your opponent's turn, summon a 2-2 two, two Ghoul. So already the stats aren't very good. 4 mana for a 5-2, that's an Ice Rager, plus a Death Rattle for 4 mana. The Death Rattle isn't that, it's, it's like, I'm pretty sure your death, the Death Rattle is pretty much guaranteed to go off. Since your opponent doesn't want 5 mana thing running around, because it's 5 damage to face every turn. But the same... The Death Rattle isn't very good either way. It's like, it's just a 2-2. Two, two. A 2-2 two, two is worth about 1 mana, so it's not very good. And 2-2s two, are really easy to clear. And this is really easy to clear anyway, like, cause it's, of its, because of its 2 health, so I don't, I don't think you'll see play. Next is Desperate Stand. 2 mana, give a minion Death Rattle, return this to life with 1 health. This is kind of like Ancestral, ancestral Spirit. But it's for Paladin, and it's like a redemption effect. And redemption, what used, to, a redemption used to be played a lot in like Secret Paladin. The only reason redemption isn't played now is because you can, like you can just get it from Hydrologist, and you don't have to put it in your deck. So this actually, I think this might see play since it combos well with like Tyrians or Wicker Flame Burn Bristles or the one one that I just showed the one one. With taunt, taunt and divine shield that I just showed, uh, this is—I don't know. This is re just really good. I think it's just a solid card. Next is Howling Commander, three mana, two two, draw a divine shield minion from your deck. So people immediately, when you think when you see this card, you're gonna think of drawing a Tyrion immediately. So that's actually not the best use of this card, like just drawing a Tyrion, because it, it's get. It's three mana, so you can't use you can't use the Tyrion immediately when you draw it. So it, it's be and so the best possible case is probably Wicker Flame, since you can play this and then this on turn six, this and then Wicker Flame on turn six. But the biggest I don't know, like it's a two two, but it does draw. Hmm. I don't know. It'll it'll probably see play for the draw effect. But I, don't, I, don't think it, I think it'll be a one-off. It won't be a two-off. Next is Blackguard, 6 mana, 3, 9. Whenever your hero is healed, deal that much damage to a random enemy minion. I actually think this is pretty good, since it's 3, 9 for 6. 3, that's, that's pretty fair stats. It's probably better than a 6, 6 for 6, because it has more health. And you want this to stick on your board longer, since you... It was especially synergized with all the lifesteal, or like it was also synergized with True Silver. So, this is actually a really solid card, just, it'll probably see play somewhere. I don't think it, I think the 6 man means it'll only be run as a one-off, but that's okay, since this, in fact, is pretty good. Next card is Light Sorrow. 4 mana, 1, 4 weapon, after a friendly minion loses Divine Shield, gain plus 1 attack. This is very. This is trash. Light's Justice is only one mana for a one four. In order to get more value of, in order to get like good value out of this, you have to have two minions at least loot Divine Shield. But I mean, the four health does help facilitate that. But the turn you play this, it's not gonna have much value unless you also already have Divine Shield minions that haven't had their Divine Shield popped already. So I don't think it's gonna see. It's definitely not gonna see play. Next is the, uh. Paladin Legendary, Bolvor Fireblood, 5 mana, 1, 7, Divine Shield, after a friendly minion loses Divine Shield, gain plus 2 attack. A lot of people saying this isn't very good, but I think it's better than they think, since the Divine Shield means it's basically guaranteed to stick for one turn, 
So and it's, it's five mana, so it curves perfectly into a spike rich steed. And after it also triggers off its own divi losing divine shield. So it's base. So when you play this, so they pink they take off the divine shield. It's a three seven. Then you play spike rich steed. So it's a five. It's a five. Uh, five thirteen with five thirteen with taunts and summons a two six taunt. So that's really good. So I think it's better than a lot of people think. Uh, I don't know if they'll see play though, but I just really like it. I really like Bolvar, the original Bolvar, even though it wasn't very good. The music was good. The effect was lackluster, but it was like they had a cool entrance. So I really hope this one's at least like playable. Next is the hero, Paladin Hero card, Uther of the Ebon Blade, 9 mana, battle cry, sub, equip a 5-3 lifesteal weapon, and its hero power is the 4 horsemen, summon a 2-2 two, two horseman, and if you have all 4, destroy the enemy minion, enemy hero, I mean. So, its hero power is a straight upgrade from the Paladin Hero Power, and it gives you an immediate effect with the 5-3 lifesteal weapon. And since it has three charges, that's five. Five. It's gonna heal about. It's gonna heal twenty since you count the armor gain. So, and the hero power is actually insane since it's gonna fit well into control. It's, but you can't. I feel like the biggest problem is you can't combo this immediately. Like you can't play this and then hero power. That's the big. That's gonna be the biggest drawback. But its hero power is so strong. Like. If your if your opponent can't like clear two twos every turn, they just lose. They just instantly lose. Like I really like all alternative wind conditions. Like my favorite like deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is like an Exodia deck. One of my I play a lot of like Exodia Mage, like the Quest Mage, and like I really like this type of card since it gives an alternative wind condition. Like it. Like, and it fits well with the theme of it, since you're already grinding out your opponent with just two twos every turn. If they let the all four two twos stick, then they'd lose. So next card is Priest. Priest, th Accolade of Agony, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, Lifesteal. Uh, it might be okay in Arena. It's not, I don't see it, I don't see it like, being played and constructed. Since a 3 mana for 3-3 three, three isn't very good. Stat, like tempo wise, but life steal is pretty good. But the biggest problem is you're not guaranteed life steal with this card. Like I have to feel like the good life steal cards are gonna be the ones are gonna be like the life steal weapon from Uther, and then the life steals with charge or taunt, because those are basically guaranteed to get healing. Okay, next card is Shadow Ascendant, two mana two two. At the end of your turn, give a random, a random friendly minion plus two plus two. This is this is weird since it's, it feels like it should fit in the zoo deck, but priests can't really make zoo decks, so this isn't. I don't really see where this fits. I mean, it probably will see play in arena since giving your a minion plus two plus one plus one isn't isn't bad, and like the two two body isn't terrible if with the effect, because like the first turn minion probably will stick. But I don't think it, it's it's weird. It's a weird card. It doesn't fit with priest. Next is spirit lash. Two mana, two mana spell life steal and deals one damage to all minion. So in the pre-release thing that they showed this in, it it looked like every time it deal damage, it gave it healed the hero priest for like one, like every time. So I mean, if it does that, this might make a janky like. Light Warden combo, but if it doesn't, this is still a pretty good card since it's early board clearing, and it'll especially it'll be really good against the aggro. I swear, like Priest struggles with early game aggro since it's like best best AOE is like turn six Dragonfire Potion. So this act this does help with the control of Priest. So I think you'll probably see play. It's like a good tool and it also heals. Next is Devour Mind, 5 mana, copy 3 cards from your opponent's deck and add them to your hand. So it's Thought Steal for 2 more mana, and it gives you 1 more card. And Thought Steal is somewhat good. The biggest problem with Thought Steal right now is like aggro is too rampant, so like you rather play 
the Glimmer Root since it's a 3-3 body and it just gives you one card. Not guaranteed, of course, but it's, it's a 3-3 body for 3 is much better on turn 3 for against aggro. So Devour Mo uh, If Lifesteal is good, I think this might see play as like more redundancy. But it do the biggest problem is Lifesteal... I don't think... It with how much aggro is currently in the meta game, and like I don't see Pirate Warrior going down, I think this won't be very good since you'll get a lot, you'll just get three aggro cards that you can't really make use of. Next is Eternal Servitude, four mana, discover a friendly minion that died this game and summon it. This is really powerful, like, and it enables a lot of combos, I feel like. So, like, my theory, I've been theory crafting like a Valen combo with this. So, you play Valen, you let it die, then you have two Eternal Servitudes and two. At least one, uh. At least one, uh, what, if, what is it? The Radiant Elemental. So, you, you play a Radiant Elemental, you play two Eternal Servitudes, you get Valen back, and then you double Mind Blast, and that does 20 damage. Like, the big... No, you get two Valen, so you do 20 damage for each Mind Blast, so that's an instant kill. It does 40 damage. So, I feel this will enable some OTK decks for Priest, but, like, the biggest problem with it is you can't play... You have to make sure you get something that's worth more than 4 mana to get, more val to get the most value out of this card. Next card is Shadow Essence. 6 mana, summon a 5-5 five five copy of a random minion in your deck. This is potentially strong. The biggest problem is the tempo loss because you're paying six men for a five five, but you could potentially get I don't know like Yasharge, Ragnaros and Wild, Sylvanas in Wild. Um, there's a there's a new priest card that's going that'll be coming up that'll show. Uh, I don't think it. The biggest problem is the tempo loss, so I don't think it'll see play, but has the potential to be really good in combos. Next card is Embrace Darkness. Six mana, choose an enemy minion at the start of your turn, gain control of it. It's basically a lifesteal for four less, but it's a delayed effect. So at six mana, you can do you can do this and then uh, let's see, four for four mana. Do a four mana play out. But like it's interesting, if you get it on a high enough value, your opponent might not be if you don't play anything that'll let your opponent kill that minion, you'll definitely get it. But the biggest problem is it's too it's not guaranteed, even with but it's like mostly guaranteed, but it's not it's not guaranteed. So it might see play, but I don't think it will. Since mind control is like barely seeing play. Next is Obsidian Statue. This is a good resurrection effect. Resurrection target and the good like the whatever the six mana five five thing was. So it's nine mana taunt and life steal and death threat. I'll destroy a random enemy minion. So four eight is a really strong ta taunt stat line as as like primordial Drake has shown. The and it's nine mana. The biggest problem with nine mana minions are usually that you can't combo anything with the one man left. But that's okay with this thing, because it has an immediate impact on the board, and your opponent basically has a save, like, huge removal on it. And it also, like, synergizes with, like, Eternal Servitude. So you play Barnes, you get this, it dies, then you get then you play Eternal Servitude, and you can get this back for only a couple mana. And it's also good for, like, Stonehill Defender, since you'll see it more often for Stonehill Defender, and, like, and uh, Free for Mirror, since it's the only, like, Priest card that you'll... Only priest card that's over eight mana, priest minion, I think. Yeah, so you might see this from from uh, free for member and be able to play it on turn eight, turn eight or play it on t turn ten with two mana left, so you can actually do something like hero power. So it might not seem like cheating one mana is that much, but it actually does make a difference for nine mana thing like cards. Next card. Archbishop Benedictus, four man, seven mana, four six. Battle cry, shuffle, shuffle a copy of your opponent's deck into your deck. This is like the ultimate steel priest, steel like thief priest card. It's Archbishop. 
It's basically what Rafam did. Archbishop, Archdief. Oh, oh man. Oh. It's not very good. But it's a very cool effect. I think you'll definitely see play in Mimi decks. Like, like very... Decks that just want to... I don't know. It's not gonna be good for against Stray Druid. There's gonna be, be there's better cards against Stray Druid because you're try if you want to take their Jade Idols, taking like taking them isn't very useful since your Jade Counter starts at one and they are, have a ton of synergy already. They probably start their at seven. They probably already have a Jade Counter of like at least four or five. So you're gonna be behind on the Jade Idol, Jade Jade like counter so it's not very useful again against shade idols it won't see, it won't see play but the effect is very cool next is the sha the hero power, hero card for anduin shadow reaper anduin eight mana battle cry destroy all minions with five or more attack and then its hero power is life void form deal two damage after you play a card refresh this so I think this is a this is a pretty cool card. The biggest problem is the battle cry isn't very impactful since if your opponent has a ton, I mean it's okay it's okay against Jade, I guess. That's the only situation I can think of where your opponent has like a ton of minions with five or more attack. But the hero power enables like a ton of combos, so you can play you can void form if you get like a ton of coins from Burgly Bully, you can void form Burgly Bully. This also synergizes with Raza. Too. So you just need a ton of cheap spells. This maybe Raza. This will definitely see play as like a combo with Raza, and it might see play. It will. I don't think it'll see play outside of a combo with Raza, but you never know. This is a pretty interesting card, at least since it's like it's shadow form basically. So next card is a rogue card, Bone Baron, five mana, five five, Death Route. Add two one one skeletons to your hand, and skeletons are one one, one mana one ones. Um, this isn't very good. I'll just say it might be okay in arena, but it's basically a seven mana seven seven, but split across three bodies. I don't think I don't think it'll be that good. I don't think it'll be very good at all. Like five mana for a five five is pretty bad, and just getting two one one skeletons in your hand that you have to play again to get. Like, they're, they're one mana, so they could fit into any curve, but they're 1-1, one, one, so they're just not very good. So I'll have to go see play. Next is Leeching Poison. Two mana, give your weapon lifesteal. Well, this isn't very worth it with, like, the hero power weapon, the 1-2 weapon. But it mu they're really trying to push weapon rogue in this expansion, as later cards will be shown. As later cards will show. But this isn't, this isn't good, like... With existing cards, but it might but it'll be pretty good with the new card that'll, be, that'll show. Uh, Plague Scientist is three mana two three combo. Give a friendly minion poisonous. That's pretty good. That's really good in arena, but I don't think it'll be good in constructed because most of the time rogues don't usually have a good board. Like, but it'll be really good in arena if you can get give this to a, like a one one. It'll be good in the constructor too if you can give this to just a one one and clear something. But like it's like if you think of it like a vile spine sp vile spine slayer but cheaper, then it's really good. But if you think, but it does require a body, it's unlike vile spine slayer. So I don't know. Next is roll the bones. Two mana, draw a card. If it has death rail, cast this again. So. It's two mana draw a card most of the time. It's not very good. Like, Rathian never saw play because you don't have enough dragons to play this. And most, like, Death Rattle rogues don't roll, run enough, like, Death Rattles to actually make this worth playing. So it's basically just two mana draw a card. Runeforge Haunter. Four mana, five, three. During your turn, your weapon doesn't lose durability. So, I'll. I don't think this is very good because it's four mana five or three, so it can it gets traded up by a three mana a two drop or a three drop, and its its uh, effect isn't very impactful since it, your weapon doesn't lose durability on your turn. The biggest the biggest problem is 
there's a lot of card. There's gonna be, since Pirate Warrior is pretty active in the meta. There's a lot of card. There's just a lot of weapon removal, so that won't really help. And this isn't very. And this is it's just not very high impact. Next is Shadow Blade, three mana, three two weapon. Battle Cry, your hero is immune this turn. This is actually insane. I feel like since. 3 mana 3 2 weapons see a play in a lot of decks like like um hunter runs the eagle horn bow uh what other there's paladin that runs it paladin runs the well, some paladins run the 3 2 weapon one I don't know the divine shield one that's just, even without synergies like even without synergies this is 3 3 mana 3 2 is a really good stat line cuz the t Fiery War Axe is a 2 mana 3 2, and that card is insane. And this has an upside, it makes your hero immune. So if you like. If you like trade into a big minion, you're basically. It's kind of like a heal. It's kind of like a heal for how much attack they had, that minion had. So I feel like this will definitely see play in Rogue. Next is Doomer Ring. I really like the name. Uh, it's 1 mana, throw your weapon at. <laughs> I like the choice of words. You throw your weapon at a minion. If it if it deal it deals its damage, then returns to your hand. So the best part about this is, like, you can you can double up on it on weapon damage if you equip a card immediately. And since it's the, the weapon dealing damage, it also works with like the Venom weapon. So it might it'll be definitely good in arena. And it also returns the weapon to your hand. So you can. So it's basically you're basically not losing durability for a weapon. So I feel like this might see play in a weapon rogue. The biggest problem is like uh the only good weapon I think of is the three two three mana three two weapon, the shadow blade. That's the only few good weapon that'll definitely synergize with this. Next is Spectral Pillager. Combo deal damage equal to the number of other cards you've played this turn. So this isn't very good. Six mana five five. And you have to play a ton of cards, but you only have four mana to to play a ton of cards. I mean, this might be okay with Auctioneer. It might see play in like a weird Mimi Miracle Rogue that tries to play, play a ton of cards and just play, plop this down and just try to damage face a lot. But it's not gonna be. I'll, it's not gonna see play. It's a very interesting effect though. Next is Vil Lillian Voss, Valkyrie, four mana, four five. Battlecry will place spells in your hand with random spells from your opponent's class. So, I feel like this is actually pretty good. Like, it's a 4 mana 4 5, which is the Yeti, which is premium stats for a 4 drop. And it's Battlecry, like, most, like, rogue spells, like, if you don't have, actually, no, it replaces all spells. So, if you get, like, useless, useless spells from Swashburglar, you can potentially just change them to different spells. But, it's also cool since it like combo it like combos well with like use cards that have, don't have like like prep if you don't have anything to use it on it combos well because it can change the prep to an actually useful spell and it can change like razor petals from the razor petal lashers and the volley to actual good cards instead of just a one man to deal one damage. So I don't think you'll see play, but I think it's a very good effect that might I don't see play in a, like a tier. In like a meta deck, but I think it might see play in like a tier four deck, like off meta deck. And this is the the rogue hero card, Valir the Hollow, nine mana, Battlecry gains stealth until your next turn, and then that's its hero power is a passive one. During your turn, add a shadow reflection to your hand, which each time you play a card, it transforms into a copy of that card. So. Also, a restriction on the Shadow of Reflection is that you can only have one in your hand at a time. So you can't, like, potentially come combo, like, a ton of Shadow Reflections on a, by building them up. So the coolest part about this card is that it's kind of like an Ice Block. Oops. I forget. So it's kind of like an Ice Block. And uh, it'll keep you out. There's not a lot of cards that aren't targeted, like, targeted... Uh, to a specific hero, so if you're like at one health, this actually does keep you alive. The only, the only card combo I can think of that'll deal more than 
more than six damage to your face with when you can't target it is two mind blasts. And priests don't run mind blasts unless they're really Mimi Valen combo decks. And the effect is actually pretty ok. The battle cry, the death rattle effect, not death rattle, the hero power is pretty okay. Since you can combo like, uh, let's think of it. It has to be less than five. It has to be less than five uh, mana for you to combo two cards together. So you can't play an Azoth and then hold it since it'll just disappear next turn. So it has to be like... It might work in like a Malagos deck since you can like Evis... You can like get two copies... You can get one more copy of Eviscerate in a Malagos deck, which is interesting. Or like another copy of Sinister Strike. So, I don't know, it probably will, you'll probably see play in like a Mimi deck, but I don't think it, the biggest problem with it is it's 9 cost and it doesn't have an immediate impact on the board, so it doesn't, it can't be used for like good combo, like comeback effects. Next is the Shaman cards, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two, Murloc, Burloc, Battlecry, Freeze an enemy. So... Like, Glacial Elemental sees play, but it's a 1 mana 2-1. One. This is one more stat for a mur, mur... It's one more health for one more mana and a Murloc tag. So, Murloc Shaman isn't very good. I I crafted the Murloc quest day one, and uh, I've been very disappointed with it. Because it seems like it should be okay, but just it just doesn't deliver. But maybe... I mean, they're trying to push Freeze Shaman in this expansion, expansion, but like this effect of freezing an enemy minion, enemy, any enemy is like it's better just to run Glacial Elemental since it's one mana cheaper. Next card is Drakari Defender, three mana, two weight, Taunt, Overload three. So this is actually a really good card against Adra since it's a three mana, two weight. That's basically what the Dread Knight, the Death Lord, Death Lord, yeah. It's Death Lord with a drawback of Overload. And Overload hasn't been that big of a drawback for most of the, for most Shaman cards. Like, I don't know if they'll see play. It might be like an anti-aggro tech and like a control Shaman. But, uh, if you play this on turn 3, down on turn 4, you only have one, one mana. And you can't really do anything, so it's basically you lose a turn by playing this on turn 3. So, I don't know. It's a pretty strong, like, taunt card, though. Next up, Ice Fishing. 2 mana, draw 2 Murlocs from your deck. Uh, this would be really good in Mill Rogue, because you can guarantee draw 2 or Cold Light Oracles. Or in, like, Druid, Mill Druid, you can guarantee call draw 2 Cold Light Oracles if you haven't. Uh, you're probably supposed to play this in, like, a t Murloc Shaman, so you can, like, get 2 mana, draw 2 is really strong, but there are 2 Murlocs, and Murlocs are usually low impact, so that's why it's 1 less than, like, an Arcane Intellect. So, uh, it might, it'll probably see play in Murloc Shaman, even though Murloc Shaman isn't very good. Next card, Avalanche, 4 mana, free as a minion, and then deal 3 damage to adjacent ones. Uh, it's an interesting card. It'll do, it's kind of like Meteor, since it'll do 3 damage to, to the other cards and neutralizes like a big threat by like freezing it. And there's also, there's another card in this expansion that helps Mer the Shaman, free Shaman, that immediately kills, that'll just destroy a minion that's frozen. So, I don't think it'll see play, but it might be interesting in like Arena or like a Control Shaman deck. Next is Icebreaker, 3 mana, 1, 3 weapon. Destroy any frozen minion damaged by this. I don't think it's that good. It's like, 1, 3 stats isn't very good. And you have to freeze a minion to actually destroy it. And it's damaged too, so it has like Divine Shield, then you can't destroy it if you freeze it. But, but, I don't know. It has potential, but the biggest problem is just the cost for the... 1-3 stat isn't very good. Next is Voodoo Hexer. 5 mana, 2-7 taunt. Freeze any character damaged by this minion. It's like if Water Elemental and uh, Ally Armor Smith had a baby. Since Ally Armor Smith is really good though. since it, So it shows that 5 mana, 2-7 with taunt with an upside is pretty good. 
and I feel like this is okay. Like, okay, since it's get, the biggest uh, thing with this is, like, if they trade, like, a seven, seven attack thing into this to clear it, then that thing is frozen for the next turn. And that's actually really good. So, yeah, I think it might see play like Army, Ali Armorsmith does. Next card is Cryostasis. Two mana give a minion plus three plus three and freeze it. So two mana freeze something against your opponent might be okay. And two mana give a minion plus three plus three what is also is really insane. The biggest problem is the freeze effect. I uh, I think if you freeze a minion on your turn before it's attacked, then it won't be frozen on the next turn. But if you freeze it after it's attacked, then then you have to wait another t you have to wait the turn after to actually use it. But this is a uh, I don't know how, how it works with like if you play me and then play this on that minion, I have to test the interaction. But if it works like if you, if it works like t uh, type A, where if you do it before a minion and then you can just use it next turn, it will be really strong. But if it works like more like type B, where you're frozen, you can't attack with it for two more turns for another turn, then it's not going to be very strong. But it's definitely uh, interesting since you can use it to freeze an enemy minion too, to like keep it away from you. Destroying things. The big and the drawback isn't that strong if you freeze the enemy minion. Next card is Snow Fury Giant, the first eleven cost like card in the game. It's an is it's an elemental. It's an a eight, and it's a giant for like only shaman. So it costs one less for each mana crystal you've overloaded. So it really synergizes with the uh, three mana two eight taunt. And it also same as with Elemental Destruction and Wild. So if you play like two Elemental Destructions, you're like gaining a ton of you're like making this really cheap. And it also like nerfs Evolve and Devolve shenanigans. Like if you devolve a 12 cost minion, it'll turn into this, which is only the only 12 cost minions I can think of are what is it? Uh, Mountain Giant. No, not Mountain Giant. No, yeah, Mountain Giant, I think, and Mountain Giant and uh, thus Ar Arcane Giant. So if you if you devolve those, then it, they just turn into 8 8 They just basically full heal if they had da damage. So it's not very impactful for that. It's a weird, like, interesting effect with Evolve. Since now, like, let's see, what 10 mana things can you evolve? It just turns into this. Um, it'll be, it's really weird with, like, uh, what is it? Uh, Yag Saran, since if Yag Saran uses Evolve now, it ends the effect of of, of Yag Saran. Since so, I mean, a ten mana eight eight. If it immediately evolves, a ten mana eight eight isn't terrible on the board, but it doesn't make it high impact. So it's kind of like a nerf to, it's kind of like a nerf to Yag Saran. So I don't know. This card might see play in a control, control shaman. So next card is. Mur Murabi, the 6 mana 4-4, four, four. whenever another minion is frozen, add a copy of it to your hand. So this isn't very good because it's very low tempo. You can potentially make it high value, but the biggest problem with value is if you die before you use the value, it's not worth it. So four mana, 6 mana 4-4 four, four is very bad tempo-wise. And to make this work, you have to freeze a ton of things. So, there was one card in this expansion, it's a 3 mana 4-4 four, four that freezes all your minions. So that could potentially work with it after you attack with those minions. The biggest problem with that is, like, you lose the attack next turn. So, I don't know, it probably won't see play. Next one is De Thrall Deathseer. 5 mana Battlecry, transform your minions into a random ones that cost 2 more. And the hero power is... Transform a friendly minion into a random one that costs one more. So, this is the cheapest uh, hero card. So, it'll try. This uh, this is a pretty good combo with like with like doppelganger, I guess. Since you play doppelganger, you play this, you get two seven uh, you get three seven seven min mana minions, and their seven mana minions don't whiff as much as six mana minions. Uh. I, th I feel like this is probably going to be the, one of the f few viable, like, hero cards, since it's the cheapest, and its effect is pre pretty immediate. 
the biggest problem is it requires you to have a board, but if you have like, it does help to, since you can like hero power to gain a little bit of a board and then it gives you a three cost minion. So you, the biggest, the, the biggest helpful, the best part about this is it goes up two. So if, so you skip the two drops phase, so you won't potentially get that uh, Doomsayer so to clear your entire board. It might fit into Token Shaman, I don't think so, since it like kind of goes against it. But, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be one of the few ones that see play because of how cheap it is. Next card for next card is a Warlock card. Drain Soul, 2 mana, lifesteal, deal 2 damage to a minion. So this is basically better than uh, what the 3 mana deal 2 damage, heal 2 damage, since it's first off lifesteal, and it has 2... So it's affected by spell damage, so if you deal 3 damage, you heal 3 damage back. And it's also 2 mana, so it's cheaper. So it might see play as removal for for Warlock, because Warlock is kind of missing in the cheap removal, like non-drawback removal uh, department. Next card, Howl Fiend. 3 mana, 3-6, three, whenever this demon, whenever this minion takes damage, discard a random card. Not good. Not good. Zero, zero out of five stars. So three man, three mana, three six is only one mana cheaper, and its effect is whenever this minion takes damage, you just discard a random card from your hand. So your opponent can just disrupt your whatever you're trying to do by discarding your hand. So this doesn't really fit into the into the discard deck. I don't feel like so. I don't think it'll see play. It might, but probably not. Next is Sanguine Reveler, 1 mana, 1-1, one, one. Valkai destroy a friendly minion and gain plus 2, plus 2. This will definitely fit in Zoo, that's all I have to say. Uh, if you combo this with like a Devil Sword Egg, you get a three, 1 mana, 3-3, three, three, and it's like you play this, and you play Devil Sword Egg, then you play this, then you get a 5-5 five, five, and a 3-3 three, three for 4 mana, which is really good. Uh, if you just destroy a random 1-1 one, one junk minion, then it'll just be a 1 mana. It, you basically lose the 1-1, one, one, but you put it into this minion, so it's basically a 1-man 2-2, two, two, sort of. Like, it's more like it's whatever. Uh, it'll probably see play in the zoo, and I just accidentally reverted all these back. Let's go back. Next card is Defile. 2 mana, deal 1 damage to all minions. If any die, it'll cast this again. So they had to nerf Dreadsteed for this. How uh, rip Dreadsteed. Uh, but this is a really strong card actually, since it's if you if the if a correct board is set up, you can potentially clear an entire board. So Pirate Warrior, they play a one drop. They play they play patches. They play Nizoth's first mate. Then they uh this is really strong against aggro since you can potentially clear a board if they they set it up right. And, and you can set it up correctly too. Like if you can trade something in, and then so something will have like, so it'll be like one health minion, that two health minion, a three health minion, a four health minion, and clear your entire board by trade, by trade again to set that up. This is really strong. Uh, I think it'll definitely see play in Warlock, but I don't know if Warlocks will see play. That's the biggest uh, drawback to it. Next is Despicable Dreadlord, five mana, four five demon. At the end of your turn, deal one damage to all enemy minions. So it's a four five, for five. So it's one more, one more mana than a uh, yeti, but it also deals damage to all enemy minions. So it's arcane explosion plus a four five body every turn. That's really good. Even if you only put it, even if they clear it next turn, it's dealing one damage to a board. Is really strong. The biggest problem is that at five mana, dealing one damage might not be that impactful, but it's gonna be impactful against aggro, and definitely this will definitely be really good in arena, since you're not it's not like harming yourself, your own board. Unlike most like AOE for for uh, warlock. Next card is unwilling sacrifice three mana choose a friendly minion destroy it and a random enemy minion. It's worse than deadly shot, except warlock doesn't get deadly shot, so it's not fair comparison. But this isn't very good. Like you, like it. It means you have to have a body to destroy. You have to have like something on board to destroy something else. 
And if you have a, like a big minion, they have like an equally big minion. It's just a one. It's basically just a one for one. So it's not really worth the three mana. I don't think you'll see play. Next one is Treachery. Choose a friendly minion and give it to your opponent. So obviously the first combo that comes to mind is this plus Doomsayer. So you Doomsayer, you give this to your hand, your opponent, and then it immediately clears the board. Uh, that might be okay. I don't know. Uh, there's also the combo with the three mana three six that just uh, you give that to your opponent, then you just keep doing da one damage to it at a time, and then they discard their entire hand. And eh, it's not very good. Uh, the only combo, the only viable combo, I think, is just gonna be this plus Doomsayer, and that's about it. That's all I have to say about it. I don't think there's any other good combos with it. Okay, next card is Gnome Feratu. 2 mana, 2-3, two, Battle Cry, remove a top card from your opponent's deck. So, it's a River Crocolisk with a with an effect. Like, this could be potentially good or potentially bad. And the biggest problem is, just removing one card from your opponent's deck isn't very impactful. Like, Fell Reaver removed three cards from your opponent's deck, and that wasn't a good enough downside for it to not to be played. So... I don't think this will. I mean, it might see play in like in a fresh, like this plus a ton of bounce effects just to discard a ton of cards in your opponent's deck. I don't think it'll see play though. It might. That's just a meme idea I, I'm thinking of. If I get two of these, I'll make that deck and then just try to make it work. But I don't think it will. But I really like the card art. Uh, that's about it. Next card. Blood Queen Lanathel, 5 mana, 1, 6, life steal, has plus 1 attack for each card you discard this game. Uh, this is better than most people think, actually, since uh, 5 mana, 3, 6 with life steal is pretty good. I f the biggest problem with it, it, it has to be a discard deck. But people keep saying, like, you're gonna discard this. But if you keep it on hand, the earliest turn you can play it is 5 mana. Usually when you're worried about discarding something... Like, the, a lot of the cards that you're worried about discarding are usually a really expensive, like Jaraxxus, Siphon Soul, and you can't really play, maybe an, a, if you Doom card, you can't play another Doom card. The biggest problem, the biggest thing with this is, it's for, it's for every car, uh, card you discard this game, so it works when you, when you play this on board, you can buff it up, t you can keep buffing it up still, so it's potentially good, but I don't think it'll make this card Warlock very good. Next is the the hero card for Ghoul, for uh, Warlock, Blood Reaver Gul'dan, 10 mana, summon all friendly demons that died this game, and the hero power, deals 3 damage, lifesteal. So, this is Nazoth, basically, for demons. Uh, Nazoth is pretty good. This is, I feel like this is better, because like, there's more demons with taunts in, in standard. The biggest problem is, it's Warlock isn't very good right now. And we don't know if Warlock will be good next expansion. Like, this might push it to being good in, like, a control deck. Like, if you... And Siphon Soul's really good, since it's healing, plus the 5 healing you already get with when the, you play the card. So, let's see. There's... For top minions, for demons, there's Voidwalker, the 1-3, one, 1 mana. And then there's the 3 mana, 3-5. Three, but that means you have to play the 3 mana, 3-5. Uh... That's about it. But it's more than an Infest in Torrid. That's, that's pretty it. I feel like it might see play. I don't think it'll make Warlock very, like OP in this expansion, though. It'll need more like Demon support. But Demon Lock might become like at least a tier 4 deck. So next card is going to be... A Warrior card, Animated Berserker, 1 mana, 1, 3. After you play a minion, deal 1 damage to it. Huh. So it's combo. They're really trying to pushing the self damage warrior in this expansion. And so it might work. Like if you play this and then play. The biggest combo I can think of is playing this and then Grim Patron and then you get another Grim Patron. It's but it's a playing a minion, so it's not summoning. Uh, it, for if you play like this plus the Berserker, why is it the? Uh, I don't know. Let's go to this. The 2-4 Berserker. You play this, it becomes a 1-mana 3-3. Three, three. That's okay. Uh, like, Whirlwind... 
like self damaging effects have always been pretty decent in Warrior, so I think it might see play, especially since it's a one drop. It won't. I don't think you'll see. I think it's a good thing it won't see play in Pirate Warrior because dealing one damage to your minions makes it makes your board worse. And it, and if you play a one health minion, it's not you can't play one health minions with this out. So next is Blood Razor. Four mana, two two battle cry and death row, Deal one damage to all minions. This is a really strong card. If you remember Death Spite from Next Ramus, this is kind of like it. If you can think of it like a 3-2 weapon for 4 that deals 1 damage to all, all other minions when you attack. So it's kind of like that. So so I feel like it's going to be okay. I feel like it's good. Like the whirlwind effects are really strong in Warrior. So I feel like it's going to see play out. It's going to at least see play somewhere. So next card is Forge of Souls. Two mana, draw two weapons. Th I, this is a pretty good card. Like you're draw drawing weapon. Like I think you'll actually. The biggest problem with this, it'll, it'll probably see play in Pirate Warrior since you play this and then you can draw. Your, you can guarantee draw your Arcanites. The biggest problem is the Temple Lost in Pirate Warrior, but you can make up the Temple Lost with with really strong weapons. So I think it might see, it'll definitely see play somewhere, because weapons are really strong. Next is 5 mana, now 3-3 three, three Death Rev, Revenant. Is that, I don't know if that's, I think that might be a typo, but eh. Battle Cry gain plus 1 plus 1 for each damage minion. So initially this didn't seem very cool, good to me, like when I saw that, but then I saw the Kibler Ben Brode stream where they played it, and with only, with only, uh, like two minions, two minions on each side damage. It became a f no, no. There was three minions on one side and two minions on the other. It became a five mana eight eight. And there's a town whirlwind effect in this expansion for a warrior. So this might actually be decent. Like you don't need the board doesn't need to be very big for like on either side for you to get a pretty decent effect revenant. So this might actually see play. Next card is an interesting card. Three mana, four three death rattle. If it's your opponent's turn, you gain six armor. So it's an aggressive stat line. So your opponent will want to trade it, trade it, but then if they do trade it, they give you six armor. So that's an interest. It's interesting decision making. This this kind of like if your opponent's turn effect is somewhat prevalent in this expansion. So I think it might see play since its stats are good. Its death rattle is pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Next is Valk Valkyr Soul Claimer. Whenever this minion survives damage, summon a 2 2 ghoul, and it's 3 mana 1 4. The one, 3 mana 1 4 isn't a very good stat line. But this combos well with the 1 3. So you play this on turn 4. You play uh, the 1 3 on turn 4, then you play this, and then you summon a 1 3 and a 2 2, which is basically a a 3-5 in stats. So that's pretty good. Uh, the biggest problem with this is uh, it has to survive damage. So if you play this without having a whirlwind effect ready, it's not going to do anything basically. You have to basically synergize this or else it doesn't do anything. Next is bring it on. 2 mana, gain 10 armor and reduce the cost of your minions and your opponents to hand by 2. So this doesn't seem very good because it's basically two iron hides and iron hide doesn't see play, but it only costs one card, and you can run two of them. And reducing card minions in your opponent's hand might actually help you, like against an aggro deck. If if they're really bad, they'll just start swarming, the, swarming the field. And like a control warrior, you just plop down a brawl, bam, their boards are cleared and they just wasted their entire hand. So it's potentially good for that, but it depends. It's mostly meta dependent. But I think aggro is still gonna be very strong, very strong in the Knights of Thorns and Throne meta. So I think you'll probably see play. Next card is Dead Man's Hand. Two mana, shuffle a copy of your hand into your deck. Very interesting card. I don't know if it'll see play because ha you have to be, but it makes it so the control warrior can just put a ton of draw in your deck, which is actually okay. But the biggest problem with this, it's two mana do nothing on the turn you play it, basically. You're tr basically hoping to get more value out of it later. And if you... Like, it might... It's not really worth it as a one-off, 
but but it might be if you can copy like good cards like Nizas or like if you can copy like it executes brawls. It's especially good if you have two of them in your hand and you play one and then you can go infinite with it. So next card is Rot Face. Eight mana four six. Whenever this minion survives damage, summon a random legendary minion. It can also summon itself. But still probably not gonna be good. Uh, I think it's it'll combo well with the one mana with any whirlwind effects. If you can get multiple out of like a whirlwind if, if you can get, get one out of this one rot face out the rot face and co combo rot faces, you might fill your board and that's really good. But other than that, I don't think it'll be that good, especially since the potential to get something like Lore Walker Cho or like um Nat Pagel, which doesn't do anything, or Nat the Dark Fisher, which is detrimental to you, is really bad. Next is Next is Scourge Lord Garrosh, the the warrior hero card, eight mana. Battlecry I've curved a 4-3 Shadow Mourn that also damages adjacent minions. And then uh, Tier Power is Blade Storm, deal 1 damage to all minions. So it's a whirlwind for whirlwind on the hero power. So the hero power you have to really make work with your deck, but I think the Battlecry is pretty good since it equips a 4-3 weapon that deals damage. It's basically a mini flame strike sort of. Like if your opponent has less than three, if your opponent has three or less minions on the board, it's basically a flame strike. If you, if the position, if the positioning is pretty bad, so I think it might, I think it might see play, especially since you can play, you can also blade storm immediately when you play this, on turn ten. Next is all the neutral minions. So one mana, act, act, Acarus veteran. One mana two one battle cry. Give a friendly minion plus one attack. It's okay. I mean, it fills a similar role to Abusive Sergeant, and the effect is it's a permanent plus one. So this might see this will definitely see play in Arena because it's like better than most one drops in Arena, and you definitely need Tempo in Arena to like win. Uh, the biggest thing with Abusive Sergeant is though is you can't you can't attack immediately with this, so the two attack isn't very helpful. So giving plus two plus two attack to to whatever you want is basically just giving a plus two charge, which is okay. That's that's it. I I might see play in zoo decks like as a replacement for for, for uh abusive sergeant since it's better on turn one than abusive sergeant if you have no other turn one play. So next card, bloodworm five mana four four life steal beast. Uh, I don't think this is gonna be good since its stats are too low. And it's not guaranteed to get life steal unless they trade it in. Uh, the beast means it could be found from zombies, so like you can give something life steal on your on your zombies, and that's actually pretty useful. The biggest problem is the cost though. Five mana for a four four isn't very good, but maybe we're uh, maybe I'm underrating life steal because life like the only the only minion with life steal in standard right now is Wicker Flame Burn Bristle and. He, because he's going to get changed his keyword to lifesteal. And then the other lifesteal minion that actually exists is uh, one of the 3 mana 1 4 demon. That's not, that's really bad. So maybe I'm just underrating lifesteal since we haven't seen much of it. Next is Bone Mare, 7 mana 5 5, give a friendly minion plus 4 plus 4 and taunt. This is insane in arena, and this might be good enough to be constructive worthy. So seven mana for basically nine nine of stats, and you're giving, and it's basically a four mana charge if you play it on a on a minion that's already on the board. This is insane, and it gives a taunt. So it's like plus four plus four plus and taunt is really good. So it's definitely gonna see play in arena. Constructed, it's really good, but it might not see play, and maybe there's cards that are just way better than it. But this is a really strong card. Next is Cobalt Scalebane, 5 mana 5-5 five, five Dragon, at the end of your turn, gain a, give another random friendly minion, plus 3 attack. So, this is kind of like Master Swordsmith, and Master Swordsmith isn't good because it's understated, and this is also understated, and a 5-5 five, five for 5 isn't very good. It's like okay stat-wise, but it's not the best. Uh, it's a dragon, so you might put it in a dragon deck, but 
the only really viable dragon deck is Dragon Priest, and it doesn't need minions that will like buff minions on your side of the field. Since so Dragon Priest right now is mostly va value and control, it's a control oriented deck that get, tries to get a ton of value with its dragon cards. So I don't think this will see play. It'll definitely see play in Arena because it's a f it's common. Next is Dead Scale Knight. One mana, one one Murloc with Light Steel. Nothing more to say about it, really. Yeah, I don't think it'll see play. Murlocs, Murlocs don't really want want to run like these be these low of a stat cards. Most Murlocs right now are one one mana, one twos. Then let's see, most Murlocs try to curve out for the Murloc Tide Color into Murloc, the Murloc whatever the Angora Murloc was, and that's okay. And then just I don't know if this will see play. Probably not though. Next is Death Speaker. Three mana, two, four, give a friendly minion immune this turn. This effect is really strong. Giving a friendly minion immune seems like it has amazing combo potential. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what you can do with this kind of effect. And three three mana three, two four isn't a terrible stat line for its cost. So it might see play in like weird combo decks. Next is Fallen Sun Cleric. Two mana, two one, give a friendly minion plus one plus one. Interesting story about this card. I got it. I got it in an email from Blizzard. I just checked my email one day. I'm like, oh, here they gave me this release for a card. Oh, cool. Well, it's like this effect. It's basically Shattered Sun Cleric for one less mana and two less stats. Uh, and Shattered Sun Cleric doesn't see play. It used to see play as a three mana three three. It used to see play even in early days, like back before Nax came out, it used to see play as 3 mana, because giving plus 1 plus 1 to a minion is actually pretty helpful. But nowadays, you can do, like, there's market, it won't see play in like aggro druid, since you can just market a lotus to give it to all your minions. So, if this was a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, it might see play, but probably not, for now. Next card is Grave Shambler, 4 mana 4-4, four four, whenever your weapon is destroyed, gain plus 1 plus 1. It's also an elemental, but that's not really that relevant. So it's only useful in decks. I mean, it could be played in every every class, but it's only really useful in like warrior, rogue, shaman, paladin. I think it will be most useful in rogue because they just get a ton of weapons from the hero power. But four mana four four isn't very good stat line. Uh, elemental. The elemental tag really isn't that relevant anyway, so I don't think it will see play. Next man, next card is Grim Necromancer. Four mana, two four, summon two one one skeletons. This is kind of like the Dragonling mechanic, which is a four mana two four that summons a two one. Uh, but this is more. This is like a four six. Um, I don't think it'll be that good. It's it might. I don't know. It might see play in token decks, but not really. Since it, it just want two one ones, which are really easy to kill, and a two four isn't that good for a four mana, so won't see play probably. Next card is Hildnir Frost Rider, three mana four four freeze your other minions. This is what I was talking about with the Murabi, like it'll freeze your other minions. The biggest problem with this card is it's, I don't know, it's a three mana four four. It's better than Arcane Gull and what the other three mana four four. I mean. It has a potential downside. It could be, it could just be a three mana four four if you have no other minions on board, which is okay. Uh, three mana four four isn't very impactful temple wise though. Like it's only one more step than a three four four or four three, so it doesn't really matter that much. Next card is Necrotic Geist. Six mana five three. Whenever a, a, one of your other minions dies, summon a two two ghoul. This is an interesting card since it's a high priority target, but its effect its effect is really strong, but its cost is too high. But it is a high priority target for your opponent. If you already have like a board of one one junk minions, you play this, you trade all those in, and you get two twos. And and if your opponent doesn't clear this, your two twos keep resummoning themselves. So that's the biggest. That's it's high. It's like high impact potentially, but I don't think you'll see play because it requires you to have a board when you play it at. Because otherwise it's really easy to trade off. So next card, Night Howler, four mana three four. Whenever this minion takes damage, gain plus two attack. 
Not good. That's all I'm going to say. It's a 4 mana 3 4, and that plus 2 attack isn't very relevant. Because most card, most classes can't heal it, so most it can be is a, if it takes 1 damage each time it takes damage, it's only going to be a, a 5 7. It's going to be an 8 1, which isn't good. Next card. Skelomancer, 5 mana 2 2. If, you're to, if it's your opponent's turn, summon an 8 8 skeleton. This is actually interesting since it, protect, it prevents your opponent from using AoE if they can't deal with the 8 8 that it summons. So you can plop this on a board of like a ton of cards. Like you'll lose tempo, but if you already have like a huge board presence, then that means they can't, they can't deal with it like with AoE and they have to trade everything in to deal with it. So this might be interesting. It might see play as like a weird tech card, but probably not. Z Snow Flipper for Penguin. Zero mana, one, one beast. It's the best card in the expansion. 10 out of 10. I'm kidding, of course. It's just a wisp with a beast tag. That means it. it's actually interesting. It might see, it might come out, you might see it as coming out of a zombie. So you just get... If you really don't have any other good effects, you just get, want to give your zombies to plus one, plus one, that might be okay. So, that's okay. It's not very, it's not going to see play. It might see play as a janky, de like, janky hunter card you put in with hunter. If you have nothing on turn four to play with a houndmaster, you plop this down and then houndmaster, bam. It won't see play, though. Next. Actually, I forgot to mention, is card art is really cute. Next is Spellweaver, 6 mana, 4, 4, spell damage, plus 2. Interesting, it's interesting because it's spell damage, plus 2. Like, the only other spell damage, plus 2 card is Evolved Kobold. But the problem with this card is it's more expensive than Evolved Kobold. The only reason you play Evolved Kobold is to get the... is to get the spell damage, and you want it to be cheap. So this won't see play, because it's just too expensive, and you... All you can do is 4 mana worth of whatever burn you want. It's not very good. Next is Sunborn Valkyr. 5 mana, 5, 4, give a Jason minions plus 2 its health. This is actually really good. If you only give it, you only need to give it to one minion, a Jason minion, for it to get, like, to break even. But if you give it to a 2, then it's a four, five, five, seven, 5, 8, basically, for 5 mana. Which is pretty good. Uh, I don't know if we'll see play in Constructed, but we'll definitely see play in Arena, because it's just a good body, good stats, good effect, really good. Next card is Tainted Zealot. Zealot? I don't know. 2 mana, 1, 1, Divide Shield, Spell Damage, plus 1. I think this is better than Evolved Kobold if you're just trying to get the Spell Damage, because it's sticky. Because the Divide Shield makes it sticky, and that's it. Like, if you're running Evolved Kobold... Just you might as well run, you're gonna run this over it because it's just sticky, it's better. Even because you're not running Evolved Cobalt for the stats usually. So next card is Tuscar Fishman. Two mana, two, three, battle cry give him friendly minion plus one spell damage. I mean if you're really worried about stats for like Evolved Cobalt, this is slightly better. Because it has like one more health. And it but the biggest problem is it requires a friendly minion to use this on. I'll definitely see play in Arena because the 2 mana 2 3 is premium. But I don't think you'll see play constructed. It might if it was like, let's see, like three expansions ago in like Hold Gods. Because this is because Evolved Gold was ran because it was a plus two spell damage. But this is this could be run because it's if you get two of them, you get the plus two spell damage for better bodies also. <laughs> so next card is Venomancer 5 mana 2 5 Poisonous. Not very good. Won't see play in arena. Won't see play in constructed. Might see play in arena because the five health for a five cost minion isn't very good. Uh, two two the two uh, attack doesn't really matter because it's poisonous. But the biggest problem is just the health, so it won't see play. Next card is Vry Ghoul. Three mana, three one. Death rattle. If it's your opponent's turn, summon a two two ghoul. This is kind of like Egg Napper since it's a three mana, three one with a death rattle that summons. That summons things. I think still think Eggnapper is better since you can trade Eggnapper in to get two two bodies, two one one bodies. This is better in like three one is a very high priority target for your opponent, so they're, just, they're not gonna try to kill it on their turn. So you're gonna probably have to trade in it, and if you do that, you're not gonna get the value out of the death rattle. Next card, Wicked Skeleton, four mana one one, battle cry gain plus one plus one for each minion that died this game this turn this turn. 
If it was this game, it'd be overpowered. But if it's it's just this turn. So I uh, if you it's not very good. It's just not good. Since you have to you have to kill at least you have to kill at least uh, four minions for it to get good stats. I mean that's not that hard, but four mana five five isn't that good. Next turn, next one is Wretched Tiller, one mana one one. Whenever this minion deals da attacks, deal two damage to the enemy hero. I mean, if you play this on turn one and attack turn two, it's kind of like a three one, but three ones aren't that good anyway, so it's not gonna see play probably. Next card, Bone Drake, six mana six five. Add a random six mana six five dragon. Add a random dragon. Death Rattle. Add a random dragon to your hand. This is pretty good, I guess. You're probably gonna run in a dragon deck. So it's giving yourself random dragons like it's good. And it's synergized with the other dragon cards. I think this might be actually okay. Might see play in dra in like the Dragon Priest, because it's very value based. Dragon Priest is very value based and this gives value. Next card is Corp Racer. Five mana three three, give a friendly minion, death rattle, resummon this minion. So this is this is kind of like Ancestral Spirit, but it's worse than Ancestral Spirit. But Ancestral Spirit is only in Shaman. That's the biggest problem with it. So this might see play in like janky combo decks because it's neutral. And you can put it in any class. So that might be make it okay. Next card. Happy Ghoul. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. It costs 0 if your hero is healed this turn. It'll definitely see play in Arena. for Especially for Priest. Because it's very easy to get a zero, zero mana three three. Uh, and constructed priests might still run it, and other lifesteal like based decks might also run it. Cause it's just a zero mana three three. I don't know. It might. I think it's actually pretty decent. It might see play. Next card. Keening Bad Chief. Whenever you play a card, remove the top three cards of your deck for a four mana five five. I don't think this is good. It might be okay in Arena, but it's not going to construct it. Because it basically prevents you from playing cards. Uh, because, like, milling yourself for three isn't that big of a deal, but if you keep. You can't play multiple cards, or else you're not going to get. Or else you're just going to mill yourself to death. So, I'm not going to see play, probably. Mindbreaker. 3 mana 2 5 hero powers are disabled. This is actually really good, because 3 mana 2 5 is premium stats. And this effect is really interesting because it's it counters a lot of the hero cards that they just created. Yeah, it's and it just counters a lot of hero power based like heroes. So I think it might see play as a weird as a tech card. So it's like a three. I think it would be pretty good. Phantom Freebooter, four mana, three three pirate, gain stats equal to your weapons. People. When people saw this card, they immediately thought putting it in Pirate Warrior, but I don't think it's that good for that. Since gaining stats equal to your weapon, most of the time, if you're not like holding a weapon, it's going to be a 4-man 3-3, three, three, and that really hurts. Like, the only other 4-man 3-3 three, three random, random Pirate Warrior has Taunt, and that makes it at least okay if you even if you don't have a weapon. This is just bad if you don't have a weapon. So I don't think you'll see playing at, in like Pirate Warrior, but... I don't think you'll see play in general. It might see play in a weird like weapon oriented deck. So this is probably not gonna see play. Next card is Serenite Chain Game. Four mana two three taunt summon a copy of this card. So it's basically a four mana four six taunt. Spread across two bodies. It's kind of like Feral Spirit from Sp Shaman, since it's summoning two two three taunts. This combos really well with like. The four man two three in like in druid, but I don't think this will see play. Like that's the only combo I can think of with this card. Like you could put it in aggro druid with mark of the lotus. I don't know. It's okay. I don't know. It's okay. I can think of combos, but I can't think. I can think of combos that will work with this, but I don't think it, they'll be viable. Next card: shallow grave digger. Three man three one death rattle and a random death rattle minion to your hand. So let's compare it to uh, Stonehill Defender, which is a three mana one four ta with taunt that'll summon that you can get a taunt from with the battle cry. This is like the opposite. It's it's a three one, which is the opposite, basically the opposite stat line, and it adds a random death rattle minion with a death rattle. The biggest problem with this card is you can't choose what you get, and so there, but you can get like whatever you want, like whatever. 
not whatever you want, like whatever, like from any class. But 3-1 is really bad for 3, especially if it doesn't impact the board. It's very value-oriented, I don't think it'll be very good. Next card, Ticking Abomination. 4 mana, 5, 6, deal, Death Row, deal 5 damage to your minions. Bad. It'll definitely see a play in Arena, sort of. Like, if you can't play minions with this out. But it is, like, a, de a decent threat to your opponent, so they won't have to clear it. So it's not going to see play in, in Constructor. It's not good enough. Next card, Corpse Taker. 4 mana, 3, 3. Battlecry, gain taunt if your deck has a taunt minion, and repeat for Divine Shield, Lifesteal, and Wind Fury. So the first thing I can think of is two heroes that this would really work with is you can get you can put it in a Paladin deck and get two more Wicker Flames, or you can put it in a Shaman deck and get two more, kind of like two more Alakirs. You have to get a 4 mana 3 3 with taunt, taunt and Divine Shield isn't bad. But 4 mana 3 3 taunt divine shield lifesteal is really good. Especially if you have two of them. Uh, I think it'll probably see play in Paladin. Maybe not in Shaman because Alakir isn't that good right now. But definitely in Paladin somehow. Next card Death Axe Punisher. 4 mana 3 3 Battle Cry. Give it a random death lifesteal minion in your hand. Plus 2 plus 2. Not very good. It has like negative tempo sort of since it, you're trying to get you're like trying to build up tempo later in the game. It's it's basically one of the, the hand buffs cards. And hand buff never saw play because of how like you lose tempo every time you try to play because of how you play it. Also, in the art, I just noticed he has an Arcanite Reaper. That's pretty interesting. Uh, but this won't see play. Next card is a uh, three mana one five Drakari Enchanter. Your end of turn tr effects trigger twice. This is really OP. It was special, it's especially OP in Wild, where you can play this with, like, you can play this with, like, Ragnaros, you can play this with, like, this is a reliable way to get two Thoris and Ticks in Wild. Uh, but, uh, let's see, what good end-of-turn effects are there in Standard right now? There's an upcoming, there's an uh, upcoming card that's, I'm gonna be, there's gonna be an upcoming card soon in this expansion, but let's see, there's Ysera, sort of. Uh, you can't really combo Ysera with it, because there's no way of reducing the card's costs. Uh, hmm. What, what good of end of card of, end of turn effects are there? You could play this with, uh, Grime Street Enforcer, so you can get plus two every turn. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think of combos in Standard. I, this is really insane in Wild. This is basically gonna break Wild. I don't think, I'm trying to think of good standard cards. I'm thinking it's a really good effect, but it depends on the quality of the end of turn effects. So next turn, next card is Furnace Fire Colossus. Six mana, six six. Dis Battle Cry, discard all weapons from your hand and gain their stats. Not gonna see play. Six mana, six six isn't very, isn't like bad for its cost, but it's not very good either. And this card, like I mean, you can play this with like Arcan. You play Arcanite Reaper, then you just have garbage. You have weapons you can't really use, so you play this, and then it becomes a huge, like, huge minion. But it's just really vulnerable to removal, so I don't think you'll see play. Next card is Meat Wagon. 4 mana, 1, 4, Death Rail, summon a minion from your deck with less attack than this minion. Uh, won't see play. One, 4 mana for a 1, 4 is pretty bad. And, like, in order to make use of that, you have to buff it. Like, let's think about it. The immediate buffing thing you would think of is hand buff, since you can probably hand buff this and get a ton of a ton of value out of it, sort of. Like you could probably if it's a, if you buff it really high, you could cheat out like cheat out like I don't know Ragnaros Light Lord, or cheat out uh uh Tyrion, or cheat out even even with two more buffs, you can cheat out uh Wicker Flame, but I'm still don't think it's gonna be good, not playable at least. Next card, New Ruby and Unraveler. Six mana, five five spells cost two more. This interesting effect. It's really disruptive. It's costing two more is much more disruptive than the Doomed Apprentice, which is one more. But this is like both sides. It's so it affects you. So if you're running a minion based deck, this might be okay. But I don't think you'll see play because this has six mana, five five. So it's really bad tempo wise. Next card is Rattling Rascal. Five, four mana, two two. Summon a five, five skeleton and Death Rail. Summon one for your opponent. So, when you look at this, it doesn't look that good. 
because it's basically just a four mana two two. Like with a, you get a better tempo than your opponent, but you give them a five five later on. So, but when you when I saw it in action during the when during the last stream, it was actually pretty interesting. Like when you play this, your opponent really doesn't have like doesn't have any answers to it really. Like if they if they just kill it next turn, they, it's just a one-for-one one trade, so it's basically nothing. Uh, I think it's interesting. I don't think you'll see play, but it's definitely an interesting effect. Next card, Skulking Geist. Six mana, four, six, destroy all one-cost spells in both hands and decks. So it, this is the Jade Idol counter. But Jade... In my, I think the existence of, of this card will just, just, like, just keep Jade Idol a, a little bit less usage. But it's very bad in most decks, because destroying one cost spells in most like is mostly helping your opponent really. It might be playing like in a deck where you want to destroy your own one cost spells. Like destroying them in your hand off the hand is pretty useful, but not to, but destroying them in your deck isn't very useful since it just helps their top decks. Cause at six man, it's on turn six, after every turn after that, they don't really want to be drawing a lot of one cost spells. Next card. Tomb Lurker, 5, five mana, 5-3, five, battle cry at a random death row minion that died this game to your hand. Not good. Uh, its effect is at least interesting though, since it gives you a little bit of value, but uh, its stats aren't very good since it gets traded up by a 3-2 three, a three two for 2 mana cards. So, I don't think it'll be that good. And this is one of the first neutral legendaries, 4 mana, 2-2, two, two, Arthas. Death Row and a random Death Knight card to your hand. It's a beast. So it's not talking about the Death Knight hero cards. Uh, it's talking about these cards. Frost Frostmourne's a seven mana five three weapon that Death Row summons every minion killed by this weapon. Insane card. Army of the Dead. Remove the top five cards of your deck. Summon any minions removed. Uh, that's less insane. It's not very. It's okay. I don't know. It might be okay. Doom Pact. Five mana. Destroy all minions and then remove the top card from your deck. Deck for each minion destroyed. I think that's like it's good. It's like a better twist. It's like twisting nether cheaper. It's cheaper than twisting nether. But the biggest problem is you destroy cards off your hand. So if you're, if you're trying to get a big board off, you're just gonna mill yourself really hard. And milling yourself is actually like if if they have seven minions on the board and you play this, you're milling yourself for seven. This is actually really high impact mill. Two man death grip. Two mana. Steal a minion from your opponent's deck and just put it in your hand. That's I don't, it's basically two man draw from your opponent's deck, but I don't think so. I don't think it's insane. I think it's kind of fair, but the biggest pro part of this is that you're stealing a minion from your de opponent's deck. This is really cool. Uh, next is Death Coil, two de two mana, deal five damage, or restore five health to a friendly character. Um, pretty pretty insane. Two mana, ob obliterate, destroy a minion. Your hero takes da damage equal to its health. That's a really insane removal. A uh, four mana anti magic shield shall give your minions plus two plus two and can't be targeted. That's really good. Plus two plus two for two four mana is pretty okay, cause like the cheapest, the cheapest. I'm thinking of like there's for plus two plus two there's uh, the wisps of the old god which is really bad and there's also every fin can happen. Every fin is awesome. I mean, which is okay. Like, cause you can get a ton of Murlocs out to reduce his cost, but at four, this plus can't target it is really good. Next is Death and Decay, which deals three damage. This is really insane. Deal three damage to all enemies for three mana. This is really insane. So you have you have five really good effects, one okay effect, and two met effects. So <coughs> these are some really, really insane cards. So next up is, is the Lich King. Which is an eight mana eight eight with taunt, so it's an iron bark protector. And at the end of your turn, it adds a random death knight card. So it's basic. It's cheaper than Ysera for eight mana, and it's an eight eight. Uh, so it's really good in that respect. So it's probably better in control decks against aggro because it has taunt. And because of taunt, you can like resummon it. Also, because of taunt, you can get it from uh, from uh, Stonehill Defender. And because of eight cost, you can get it from. Uh, Free from error, so this is potentially really good. And this and the Death Knight cards are really insane, especially if you get like Frostmourne and those other insane cards. 
Next card is Prince Kalisaf. 2 mana, 2 2, Battlecry. If your uh, deck contains no 2 cost cards, give your all minions in your deck plus 1 plus 1. This is really bad. I really hope it, that can be. I think the only deck it can be useful in is Zoo and Quest Hunter. Uh, the biggest problem with this is you're losing 2 cost cards, and 2 cost cards are some of the most impactful cards of the game. So, like, you're losing. If you're Mage decks, you're losing Frostbolt and a lot of other decks. In like priest deck, you're losing shadow visions, radiant elementals, stuff like that, and so it ri the decks you want to run this in are ones that have small minions because the plus one plus one effect is much stronger with small minions than it is with big minions. Because like giving a big minion big minion plus one plus one is not very impactful. Um, so I don't know if if this is what makes quest hunter uh quest hunter viable, I'm gonna eat my own socks. Or if it makes like Zoo actually good, am I gonna eat my own socks? I'm kidding. Of course. I'm not gonna actually eat my own socks. I'm not making any promises there because I think it has potential in Zoo, and that's about it. Next is Prince Taldoram, three mana, three three. If your deck contains no three cost cards, transform into a three three copy of this mini. I think this is actually okay. Like this might see play in combo decks. Like first off, in combo decks, you're basically want to draw through your entire deck anyway, so you might as well just put three cost cards. This is base. This battle cry means as long if your deck has no three cost cards at when you play it, that's then you can transform into a three three copy. So if you're drawing through your entire deck anyway, so you, you can still put three cost cards in it. So I think this might actually be okay in a combo deck. Uh, next card, Prince Valnar, four mana four four. If your deck contains no four cost cards, gain life steal and taunt. People say this is worse, like it has a worse effect than the other ones, but I think they're really over undervaluing the lifesteal and the taunt. So, containing no, giving, making sure your deck has no four cost cards is actually really easy. There's, like that's where I, four cost cards are where I can think of uh, decks where you can just take off four cost cards. Like you, let's see, for mage, let's see, polymorph isn't really run that much actually nowadays. So you, it's not that hard to put this in a mage deck and get a lifesteal and taunt. This is really good in Miracle Road because the only four cost card they run is Sherizen. Sherizen is good against control, but it's not good against aggro. So this might be an aggro anti-aggro tech card. So that's all the cards. I'm I'm done with it. Uh, so I just made this video. I want to see how wrong I can be. How wrong I'm gonna be with the next expansion? Because expansion comes out tomorrow. I just want to see how 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 good my predictions lined up with what the meta game is like. So. I might make most more Hearthstone videos. Uh, Pokemon Ash Gray, I'm gonna make more videos for it. I'm just been kind of lazy because it's like, like it's kind of really slow. You play, cause so see, until next time.